And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. According to the heathens' school system and their history books, we are descendants of slaves. Our enemies love to remind us on how our ancestors were captured from the west coast of Africa and dispersed all over the world. The heathens never discuss who we were as a nation before the slave trade. Is it a coincidence who we were as a nation is not discussed in their history books until this day? Why is it important for the heathens to hide our identity prior to becoming slaves? The scripture said they have conspired together to cut us off from being a nation. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Israelites, this is why you cannot trust the heathens' books or their version of history. None of their books or history lessons talk about our nation prior to the slave trade. Let us talk about our nation's history before the slave trade, who we were and what happened to us as a people that led our ancestors into slavery all over the world. Until this day, as their descendants, we are captives. Everything the Most High say he will do must come to pass. Remember, his words will never return to him void. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. King David became the second king of Israel after the Most High took the kingdom from King Saul. Solomon replaced David as king. The house of David ruled over the Israelites until Solomon sinned. Once Solomon sinned, the Most High said, for the sake of David, his servant, he will not split the Israelites into two kingdoms during Solomon's reign, but he will surely split the Israelites into two kingdoms during the reign of Solomon's son. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servants. Notwithstanding, in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. The Most High fulfilled what he said he would do, splitting the Israelites into two kingdoms during the reign of Rehoboam, Solomon's son. Rehoboam consulted the elders of Israel on how to lead the Israelites. The elders advised Rehoboam on how to deal with the Israelites. However, Rehoboam did not listen to the counsel of the elders. He listened to his friends. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. King Rehoboam did not listen to the wise counsel of the elders because the Most High hardened his heart. Through the hardening of the king's heart, the Israelites wanted nothing to do with Rehoboam or the house of David. Yah had to harden the king's heart to cause the Israelites not to follow King Rehoboam and fulfill what he said he would do, divide the Israelites into two kingdoms. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people. For the cause was from the Lord that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Because Rehoboam wanted to treat the Israelites poorly, the Israelites realized the king would not listen to them. They decided they would not follow the house of David any longer. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. The Israelites became two kingdoms due to Solomon's sins and the heavy labor King Rehoboam wanted to place on the Israelites. 
When King Rehoboam saw that the Israelites wanted nothing to do with him, he declared war on the Israelites who rebel against him to force them back under his rulership. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam the son of Solomon. Rehoboam was unsuccessful in attacking the Israelites because the Most High intervened and informed Rehoboam through his prophet not to attack his brethren because the division came from him. But the word of God came unto Shema'ah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearken therefore to the word of the Lord, and return to depart according to the word of the Lord. Israelites, it was the Most High that split the kingdom into two. The northern kingdom led by Jeroboam, the southern kingdom led by Rehoboam. The northern kingdom retained the name Israel as well as house of Israel. In the New Testament, the northern kingdom is called Ephraim, children of Israel, the Gentiles, and house of Israel. The capital of the northern kingdom was Samaria. And he bought the hill Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver, and built on the hill, and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shemer, owner of the hill, Samaria. The Most High promised Jeroboam that he would make him king over Israel. When the Most High split the nation of Israel into two kingdoms, the Israelites that rebel against the house of Judah made Jeroboam king over Israel, fulfilling what the Most High promised Jeroboam. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. The northern kingdom was exiled due to the sins of Jeroboam and the other kings that followed his example. Jeroboam committed the abominable sin that the Most High hates, idolatry. Anywhere there is idolatry, witchcraft is present. Jeroboam submit to the spirit of fear and allowed the unclean spirit cause him to commit the same sins Solomon did that led to the Most High splitting our nation into two kingdoms. Jeroboam did not want the Israelites to go to Jerusalem to sacrifice and worship the Elohim of Israel. He feared if they went to Jerusalem, the northern kingdom would return to Rehoboam, the house of David, to rule over them. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord of Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Due to this unwise counsel Jeroboam received, he decided to make two golden calves for the northern kingdom Israel to worship and make sacrifice to. Israelites, this is why you do not let any unclean spirit influence you to go against the Most High. Yah would never approve his people to worship idols. His first commandment is there should be no other gods before him. Jeroboam, who was king over the northern kingdom, he made a decision for the Israelites. Due to this unwise choice, this sin became a stumbling block to the house of Israel. Jeroboam had two altars for his idol, one in Bethel and the other in Dan. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. Jeroboam did not stop there. He appointed high priests for the golden calf's idols. The priests were not from the tribe of Levi. Everything the Most High command his people to do, such as the observance of the feast days and other traditions, Jeroboam imitate to keep the Israelites from going to Jerusalem to worship. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. 
And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. Israelites, this is why you have to be careful with whom you appoint over you as a leader. Do not blindly follow people because they have an enormous following or they are popular. Remember, whatever is popular with men is an abomination with the Most High. Just because people praise and love these leaders do not mean you should follow. The scriptures say, woe unto you when people speak well of you. They also spoke well of the false prophets. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. You have to check yourself because you may be off course and not in the will of the Most High when people are praising you. Jeroboam was appointed by the Most High to be king over the northern kingdom. Jeroboam made a covenant agreement with the Most High to lead the Israelites from the northern kingdom. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to thee. The Most High promised to help and elevate Jeroboam if he followed the statutes and commandments of the Most High. As long as you do right, the Most High will be with you and fight for you. As soon as you break his commandments and cause his people to sin, Yah is against you. In addition, this is why the punishment for leaders, pastors, and teachers are harsh because they cause the people of the Most High to stumble. I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments as David my servant did, that I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. Through the leadership of Jeroboam, being led by the spirit of fear, gave the kingdom of darkness the opportunity needed to take over Jeroboam's kingship. Jeroboam's sins passed on to the northern kingdom, causing the Israelites to sin against the Most High. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Lord, and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he did, they departed not from them. Jeroboam forgot what caused the downfall of Solomon to make him king over Israel. The kingdom of darkness has a way of causing you to forget what the Most High has done for you. The lust of the flesh will lead you away from the guidance of the Most High. The Israelites should have known better than to worship idols. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they, after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant, and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power, and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship. And to him shall ye do sacrifice. The Israelites should have rebelled against Jeroboam just as they did with Rehoboam. Due to the convenience of not having to go to Jerusalem to make sacrifices, they went along with the idolatry. Israelites, this is why you should not participate in other people's sins. The Israelites allowed the evil to continue. No one chastised Jeroboam for the diabolical practices. They simply allow him to be their king and ignore the commandments of the Most High. Due to their failure to hold their leader accountable, this was the beginning of the northern kingdom's downfall and judgment. After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places. Whosoever would, he consecrated him, and he became one of the priests of the high places. 
and this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. Before the Most High exiled Israel from his presence, he gave them several warnings by his prophets. Yah could have exiled the Israelites during Jeroboam's reign, but he did not. Several kings reigned after Jeroboam and continued the abominable practices of idolatry. Yah had enough of the Israelites' detestable practices and allowed the Assyrian king take the house of Israel, the northern kingdom, into exile. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Halah and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. You would have to read the Apocrypha to find out what happened to the northern kingdom. The Israelites took counsel among themselves to go to another country where no man has dwelt. They wanted to keep the statutes and the commandments of the Most High in peace. Second Esdras chapter 13, starting at verse 40, will reveal this information. According to the heathen's history, the house of Israel or the northern kingdom vanished when the Assyrians captured the northern kingdom. The fact that people actually believe the ten tribes are lost surprises me. The heathens want the world to believe the northern kingdom is lost. However, the northern kingdom is not lost. The kingdom of darkness and the workers of iniquity do not want to reveal where they are and who they are today. If they allow this information to become mainstream, they would have to give up Israel, Egypt, and the identity of the Israelites they have stolen. In addition, all the money they have received from sheep all around the world because the pagan church said you're supposed to support the state of Israel. Even if the Israelites do not know who they are today, the Most High know who His people are and He is revealing this information by the Holy Spirit dwelling in His people. The Assyrian captivity is not the Israelites' first captivity. The Israelites have been exiled by the Most High and placed in numerous captivity due to their idolatry. During each captivity, they remain a nation and they knew who they were. Once the Israelites repent, the Most High would bring His people together again. It's obvious the kingdom of darkness and the heathens have an agenda to keep the Israelites' identity a secret to prolong their rulership. How is it the Jews say they are the chosen people, yet they have no idea where their brethren are today? I guess they must have forgotten that the Most High said His people have His Spirit dwelling in them. Through the Holy Spirit of the Most High speaking through His people, connect the Israelites together all over the world where they dwell among the heathens. Benjamin was also taken in the northern kingdom captivity, the only tribe that remained in Israel after the Most High allowed the northern kingdom to be exiled was Judah. Benjamin is the smallest tribe in the twelve tribes of Israel. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. The southern kingdom of the Israelites is called Judah. The capital of Judah is Jerusalem. In the New Testament, the southern kingdom is known as Jews. Do not mistake the Jews in the Bible with the people who call themselves Jews today. There are two different people. The word Jew was added in the Bible to cause confusion. The Most High is not the author of confusion. Yah's people are Israelites. The Most High never changed his people's name. Jerusalem is the city the Most High chose to bear his name. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. The southern kingdom of Judah was ruled by King David's bloodline. The kingdom of Judah consists of two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. When the Most High split the Israelites into two kingdoms, he said he would not take the whole kingdom away from the house of David. He would give David one tribe. Benjamin was the tribe the Most High selected. I'll be it. I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen, 
and unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. Israelites, there is a reason the Most High chose Benjamin. In multiple messages on this channel, I have said to you repeatedly, the Most High honor all covenants, regardless if the covenant is good or bad. David made a covenant with Jonathan. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house for ever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Jonathan made David swear to show kindness to his house forever. Jonathan's father was Israel's first king, Saul. The scriptures reveal Saul descend from the tribe of Benjamin. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? Yah took the kingship away from Benjamin due to Saul's constant disobedience and gave it to Judah. David is from the tribe of Judah. In addition, Jacob prophesied that Judah is the one his brothers would praise. Due to this covenant made between Jonathan and David, Judah and Benjamin is tied together until the covenant is broken. Israelites, that is why Benjamin was selected as the one tribe given to the house of David when the Most High split the Israelites into two kingdoms. Most people believe Levi is a part of the southern kingdom of Judah. The Levites are not a part of the nation of Israel. Although they are Israelites, the Most High has taken the Levites for himself. The tales of witchcraft will give you in-depth details on the Levites. Judah commit the abominable act the Most High hates, idolatry. They did what was evil in the sight of the Most High. The kings that took over the kingship once Rehoboam reigned in went as far as building altars to their idols in the house of the Most High, provoking the Most High to anger. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. The Most High warned Judah, but the kings of Judah were wicked and did not listen to the Most High. The Israelites follow in their leader's footsteps. The Israelites from the southern kingdom of Judah forsake the Most High and worship the idols of the heathens. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to defile it. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin, because that they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. The Most High mourned for his people, yet they did not listen, both Judah and Israel. Therefore Yah allowed Judah to go into captivity, just as he exiled the northern kingdom, the house of Israel, from his presence. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel and will cast off this city Jerusalem which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. And now therefore thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, whereof ye say, It shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. The southern kingdom of Judah was led into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Later on, Judah was scattered all over the world by the transatlantic slave trade as well as the Arab slave trade. The Israelites that was not sold into slavery, some willingly migrate to different parts of this world, while majority remain where our ancestors ran for refuge. 
Through the sins of idolatry, the Most High removed his chosen people from his presence. Before we became descendants of slaves, we had our own land, culture, wealth, and many more. We were not slaves before we became descendants of slaves. Our culture was stripped from us and given to the synagogue of Satan. Satan utilized his seed to change history. Before our nation split into two kingdoms, we were one mighty nation chosen by the Most High. Through the lust of our ancestors' heart, our nation fell. Our ancestors were led into captivity as their descendants we are still in captivity. The Israelite nation is still divided into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. The Most High promised to restore and make his chosen people one again. Until then, we have to adhere to the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Despite the beliefs of the pagan church concerning the everlasting covenant the Most High made with his people, the Israelites, the Most High is not finished with his chosen people. Yah promised to restore and give us the years the stripping locusts have stolen from us. We will be one nation again, ruling with our Messiah. Do not believe the lies that is coming from the kingdom of darkness planted in the workers of iniquity. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me.